What's up everybody, Cursing Mushroom here and welcome back to another This Week at Bungie video. So today we're going to be talking about This Week at Bungie, of course. There's some interesting things that they talked about and they gave us a little insight to the next upcoming patch, which is really fantastic. It's some of the exotic armor tuning that they've been working on. Now they talk a little bit about here, which we're not going to get too far into it, but they talk a little bit about Dead Orbit 1 and this and that, yada yada yada, and that... Um, you know, right now Iron Banner's going on, and if you want to, um, you know, level them up, do it now while you can. Nothing super crazy, but I did want to mention a couple things before we get to the exotic armor changes. So, right here, okay, um, first off, actually, faction rallies will be available Tuesday, June 26th, so next week we're going to be able to have another faction rally, which is really nice, but they say here in a previous this week at Bungie, we told you that the winter offerings weapons would be added to the event reward pool after the first event. That was incorrect for Season 3, which will operate differently than the past seasons. During the season, the factions will continue to feature the original winner's offerings for all three events. If you didn't make it to rank 50 with your faction of choice during the first event, you can pick up where you left off by pledging to them again. Or you can opt to start with the new blood. But remember that your pledge is account-wide. Choose carefully. So if you didn't get the winner's offering weapon, you better hope they win this time so you can get it. Because you're not going to be able to get it from the actual pool of weapons. That's something that they changed it. And I wanted to cover that because I thought it was important in case you did miss out on something. Like, for instance, the shotgun was available. I didn't purchase it just because, honestly, there's a bunch of good shotguns that I use and I would rather use than that one. But each his own, you know. Do what you wish. So let's move on to the exotic armor changes, and we'll talk a little bit about it and give you guys my thoughts. So, of course, you see the armor that's going to be getting changed here. We've got a bunch of different things. We've got three things from Hunters, Titans, and Warlocks each. Now, it's strange. Let's just get on into it, okay? Let's get on into it. So this update is going to happen in July, which is not far away, which is really good. So let's get into the what they're talking about, and we'll spill the beans a little bit. Last month, we did a tuning pass on exotic armor in 1.2.1. We've been working on more changes to more gear and wanted to give you a peek at which armor pieces we have plans for next. Here's the sandbox designer, Victor Anderson, with the details. So Victor goes on to say, We're bringing another set of changes to exotic armor with update 1.2.3. As we continue to iterate on exotic armor, we hope that we will continue to provide feedback. You've heard the goals from this last TWAB. We are introduced to the changes, so let's get right into them. So pretty much all he's going to say is this is what's changing. So let's check it out. So the Hunter. The first thing up is the Lucky Raspberry. So now you're going to get increased chance to fully recharge your Art Bolt Grenade on Art Bolt Grenade hits. Guarantees a recharge on getting a full chain that hits four targets. That means if you hit four enemies, you're going to instantly get your grenade back, which is really fantastic for PvE. Not as much in PvP unless they're all just huddled together. While just about everybody could appreciate the theoretically infinite grenades Lucky Raspberry could generate, its purely random nature made many people shy away from it. With this change, your input will now affect the outcome, so plan your throws accordingly. I never really had a problem with the Lucky Raspberry before. I've actually got a build if you want to check it out, the link above. And I really love the Lucky Raspberry. I actually don't have it on PC yet, and it's something I'm still looking forward to get. So we'll have to see how this change is. I think it's going to be awesome, to be honest. Now onto the Stomp Ease. So what they've done is they increase benefits while using Strafe Jump and Triple Jump. So before, what they're saying here is that it was only affecting high jump, so it would pigeonhole people into pretty much using the high jump. So now it's making it available to strafe jump and triple jump, which is nice because I solely use strafe jump. It's my choice of jump, unless I have to use um, one of the others for a specific reason, but mostly I'm using strafe jump. And the young Ahamkara Spine, they removed marking functionality Improved the trip mine grenades blast radius and throat speed and made it so your trip mine grenades are harder to destroy. Solar ability hits now grant some trip mine grenade energy. 
This marking functionality, while useful in some circumstances, such as in a crucible, did not have much merit in PvE, so we removed it to head in the better direction. Now your trip mine grenades are punchier and you can get access to them faster, which is going to be great to see because let's see how quick that regeneration is. Using all solar weapons, you could potentially get your grenades back pretty fast. Now on to my beloved Titan, the ACD slash zero feedback fence. Now this change is actually really, really good and let's talk about it. Now it's going to grant Fury Conductor stacks on melee hits instead of kills so you're going to have to stack by just hitting a target and fury conductors now grant stacking melee damage resistance so not only are you going to get it faster because you have to get the kill you're going to get melee damage resistance and they go on to say here these changes are mostly aimed at fury conductors better in pve encounters while the feedback fence could protect you from hordes of thrall by keeping them staggered it just wasn't that much use against something like a hive knight wielding a sword the changes also make this exotic better in Crucible, but the solution of just shooting opponents still works. So I think this is actually going to be a really good change, and they're going to make them pretty powerful. Because let's say you're in Crucible, for instance, and you're having a melee engagement with somebody. Now you're going to get melee damage resistance, and you're going to damage them quicker because you're going to get that hit with that Fury Conductor perk, which is really nice. We'll have to check it out and see. Now, Doomfang Pauldrons. Now, I wasn't really stoked about the Sentinel once I played with him. I really enjoyed the thought of it, but it just didn't strike home once I actually got to play with it when Destiny 2 came out. This was one of my favorite looking exotics from the release, and it just didn't have much merit for me to continue to use them. But now they're changing it, and these are the changes. Void melee kills now grant more super energy, and shield throw hits will now extend the duration of your super, which is very good. We'll have to see to what extent these um, effects are, how much super energy you get, and then how much of an extension on your super it gets, and see if we can kind of exploit it to a degree to see if it's going to be something that's just really fantastic. Now the Dune Marchers. They reduce the time to activate linear actuators while you're sprinting to 1.5 seconds. It was originally 5 seconds, which is a big, big increase. I think these are going to be the most impactful, honestly. And they increase the damage of the chain lightning effect 70% in PvP and 440% in PvE. This is going to be dramatically different, especially in PvE. And I can't wait to try them out. And they go on to say that while the lightning effect of Dune Marchers was novel, the time needed to start it up and its fairly low impact led to many players simply seeing them as the sprint pants, and I believe that to be true. So with this new update that's coming out, I want to try these really bad. Probably one of the most exciting things for the Titan for me. I don't know, I'm excited for all of these things, but this one seems pretty interesting. That That's a big buff in PvE. Now onto the Warlock. The Crown of Tempests. Collapse the total number of stacks of Conduction Tines to 3 with the same total effect and each stack of Conduction Tines lowers the upkeep cost of Storm Trance. So this is pretty good. So what's going to happen is you're going to be able to activate these stacks quicker and get the same effect out of it, which is really nice. And you're going to pretty much get your Storm Trance for longer, if, if I'm understanding this correctly, that just, you, you know, if you're not attacking anything, then, which is pretty nice. Now they go on to say here, Nazarek Sin and this exotic were quite similar. So we pushed harder on this exotic for Stormcallers who want to invest heavily in ability use. Warlocks also don't have many exotics that modify their supers, and not receiving the full benefit of Conducting Tines while Storm Trance was a little disheartening. So we added a benefit during the super's duration to alleviate that. We'll just have to see how this one works, honestly. I think it's going to be pretty cool. I already enjoyed it, honestly, already. It's one of the things I love to use with my storm collar but we'll just move on to the Karnstein armlets this one's pretty inter interesting as well they're all pretty interesting to be fair but I think the warlock got some pretty heavy tuning here so they removed the melee hit effects where it gave you resilience mobility target highlighting and now the melee kills instantly heal you and then grant continuous healing for eight seconds dude dude you will never die if you're using devour <laughs> like never you get one kill, you're just on to the races. Never die. Pretty great, actually. In this iteration of Karnstein Armlets, we've simplified the exotic to be about death and healing. 
Previously, the effect was split between hits and kills, providing inconsistent experiences. While the effect is much more basic now, it should be more reliable and more effective in most situations. They are 100% correct. Now, Starfire Protocol. Empowering Rift, weapon damages, hits, now grant fusion grenade energy. What, 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 what? Let's say that again. Empowering Rift, weapon damage, hits, now grant fusion grenade energy 20%. Okay, wait a second. Can I use an auto rifle and just have my grenade back instantly? Dude. Dude. Imagine stacking two Warlocks, Starfire Protocol, Healing Rift, Empowering Rift, Luna Faction Boots. Oh my gosh, this is going to be nuts. Now they go on to say, much as with the Luna Faction Boots, we felt like giving a bonus to players who decide to go on the offense with Empowering Rift rather than playing it safe with a Healing Rift. So, I mean, oh dude, <laughs> this could be so good. This could be so good. Oh man, I cannot wait to see these in action. That's pretty much it for this week at Bungie this week, guys. And they go on to say here some stuff that I'm not going to read because it doesn't really affect us any. And on that note, guys, I'm going to end the video here. I'm sorry it didn't come out yesterday. I had some stuff come up and I made it when I could. It's really early right now and that's how we roll, man. So with that being said, guys, I hope you have a great afternoon, morning, day or night, wherever you may be. As usual, Cursing Mushroom out.